So you, you warned that the climate change could be more devastating than the pandemic. So how serious is the situation now? And what would happen if we do nothing? We're in the early stages, so the total temperature rise is about one degree centigrade right now. But as you increase the temperature uh, between now and the end of the century, by then you'll have five times as many people dying every year as we have from the pandemic. It's great that President Xi is making climate a priority and wants to work with other countries on this. Without the contributions of China, the many of the key ingredients like uh, the batteries and the solar power wouldn't be uh, so affordable. And so China's already making a contribution. Uh, I hope that innovators in China uh, can bring down the cost of green energy enough that uh, China can even increase uh, its commitment to use renewable energy in the One Belt Initiative. Uh, already, you know, if you look at what uh, China and others have done to reduce the cost of solar power, uh, what China's doing on electric cars, which, you know, it's the biggest market, uh, electric buses, which are really starting uh, in many Chinese cities to be standard, and that uh, is driving the price of those down so that we can get worldwide adoption. So there are some categories of emissions that we've made progress on. Well, no doubt um, wind and solar will be a gigantic part of the future electricity generation. But unless there's a miracle of storage, uh, we'll have to also have sources like nuclear that do not depend on the wind or sun. So uh, how can we make advances uh, in climate governance that features win-win cooperation? Uh, do you think the Paris Agreement's goals will be achieved? Well, the Paris Agreement was a very positive milestone. That was also the first uh, climate event where R&D was discussed. We're all looking forward to Glasgow uh, in November, which of course the UK is hosting. And we hope to see a lot more discussion about the innovative tools uh, even the rich countries can't afford uh, to do it that way. Obviously, technological cooperation is very important in this field, in developing new energy. So, do you think we, countries uh, have done, done enough to cooperate technologically uh, as well as in investment? Two areas that are a big win-win for China and the U.S. would be climate change, and second is uh, innovation, so that if we ever have another pandemic, we're able to stop it very, very early uh, before it starts spreading around the world. And, you know, both countries care a lot about these two issues, and, you know, both countries have amazing smart people and a younger generation that would be proud to be part of this. So what drives you to write a book on uh, climate change instead of uh, other topics on global health and development? So my hope is that by doing a book, uh, the world can come up with a plan, a plan that involves a lot of innovation, a lot of cooperation between different countries, a lot of very innovative policies. People who think this is easy, you know, they're wrong. But people who think it's impossible, uh, they're also wrong. If, if we work together for these 30 years, you know, this will be the moral cause that the younger generation will be proud of the fact that they stood behind and they made sure it was given the right priority to preserve the livability of the earth and the natural ecosystems.